This is ABC News Nightline. Reporting from Washington, Ted Koppel. As he so often does, the senior... We senator... record everything. Everything. The impact of that becomes totally numbing. I mean, future generations are going to be looking at literally billions of pictures and, and reams of videotape and film, and I'm not sure that they'll be able to make any sense out of it because we don't discriminate between what is important and what is mundane. Look at his haircut, and you know that it's been a while since Ted Koppel voiced his concerns about our unwillingness or inability to distinguish the important from the mundane. Nothing has happened in the decades since to qualify his worries. In fact, the growth of the web, email, and social media has made it nearly impossible to escape a flood of ephemera. Google can give me about 224 million results if I search for what really matters. 224 million? That's more than I could consider in 100 lifetimes. Bombarded by viral videos, tweets, and trending lists, it's easy to know what's popular today, but very difficult to discern what's enduringly important. All of that stuff that's supposed to inform us does just the opposite. Without knowing what's first and highest, without a framework in which to structure all the facts that come at us, we're lost, informed, but not well informed. Good evening, Dr. Martin Luther King, the apostle of nonviolence in the civil rights movement, has been shot to death in Memphis, Tennessee. I think we initially put these two excerpts together to highlight their differences. From one angle, Plutarch and Thucydides couldn't look more different. Plutarch searches for the characters of men in their gestures and jokes, leaving the more weighty matters the most famous sieges, the greatest armaments, the bloodiest battles to other men, men like Thucydides. But what strikes me now is their fundamental agreement. At bottom, they both think that they're discovering something essential about human beings and their capacity for excellence. Their discoveries are supported by the facts, but are somehow bigger and truer than the facts. History as they write it can reveal the souls of men, their characters and inclinations. Facts in their hands take shape and have meaning because they can be fit to a structure determined by opinions about what really matters and how it all works. It seems laughable today to promise, as Thucydides does, a possession for all time. Convinced that we cannot conquer time, we try as best we can to cope with its inexorable passage. So we archive everything. We don't know what's important, so we hold on to all of it, stored away just in case. The past is reduced to a dusty warehouse filled with artifacts waiting to be catalogued. And we try to make everything ephemeral. Think of the 24-hour news cycle. We are consumed today by news that tomorrow we'll forget. We make history into nothing more than the news that isn't new anymore. Immersed in the present and anxious for the future, we've become creatures who, in, in important ways, have no past. Whatever else a college education should aim to achieve, we need now to make it our business to orient ourselves, to gain some steadfast footholds and to anchor us in the flood of ephemera, to become ourselves those anchors. For that, the facts aren't enough. The facts can't save us. We need to look beyond the facts. We need the story that connects those facts and gives them meaning. We need an education in the more weighty matter. 